My name is Hank Kersey. I'm the military advisor for Call of Duty. You're watching GRTV. Welcome to Leipzig. It must be a little bit of a conflict of uh, cultures coming from the military and coming to a game development studio where people may be not as disciplined as, as what you're experienced to. How has that been? Oh, you're absolutely right. Your first thing is one of visual shock. You got people with all kinds of metal stuck in their ear and their nose and their cheeks, their eyebrows, tattoos all up and down, tattoos of gaming characters on their arms. They're wearing ratty ass clothes with mottos that are obscene. Uh, so it is a uh, clash of cultures. But the way I was able to uh, finally become appreciative of these guys is, is their commitment to work their absolute commitment to producing the finest product there was. When you sit down with this guy with metal all in his face, but he's intent on drawing the level of uh, brick on the bottom of a building and showing the mold grow on it, you know, and, that, and he's spending hours and hours doing this, you just you have nothing but admiration that someone would do that. You have to have an admiration of the artwork that goes into that, the time that's spent, and the absolute dedication and commitment to these guys. So in the end, I'm a fan of them. I haze them all. I walk into their rooms and say, you have any damn military advice you need? You no, know, I'm just drawing the, 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 making sure there's destructible grass on the game. I say, okay, get down and do some push-ups then, because you need some upper body work. Oh, okay. You know, it's like a breath of bad air, and then uh, things are okay. But uh, actually, I do have a great deal of respect for these guys. Can you give us any specific examples of where you've said, where, on this game, where you've said, like, hmm, it's a good idea, but maybe you could do it in a slightly different way. Yeah, one of the things that I worked with him was um, the layout of a Japanese in a defensive position. What was the difference in Japanese tactics? Um, how they would react to a Marine attack in the front of their position, how they would sight their automatic weapons. Uh, when they lost one of their automatic weapon positions because you took it, what would they do? Would they counterattack? You know, I, I talked to scenarios, realistic scenarios of how a Japanese would react. Uh, the other thing we talked about is uh, the importance of the flamethrower uh, in a Pacific theater. We were able to talk to veterans of the conflict, and to a man, almost every one of them says, Oh, we really enjoyed it. That flamethrower was a critical weapon. I'd come up there, and I knew I didn't have to go down in that bunker with that pistol if I had the flamethrower in the aperture. So we took care of that guy. He came forward. We protected him all the way up until they finally you know, stuck the nozzle in that aperture and hosed that machine gunner. Um, so, you know, these are the things that I was able to bring to the table in this game. My favorite moment of all the games I've worked on. I did enjoy um, a paintball fight we did one time in the early days with one of the studios. I made everybody take the shirts off. That was uh, amusing to me because I wanted them to feel the smack of a round in there. Uh, I just, uh, I usually enjoy, and it involves alcohol later on with the guys and just talking, which is probably inappropriate for whatever uh, level this has, but something about drinking. With it's okay talking about drinking. <laughs> oh, good. The, the military advisor uh, looks at the game through the lens of a former soldier. The, the, uh, the developers do a great job putting the game together. They've got all the books laid out and they've done the research, uh, but what they haven't done is moved on the ground as a soldier. They haven't uh, placed a machine gun. They have not uh, clambered out of a half track or an Amtrak onto a beach. And so I can look at the game as a last check through a different lens and say, mm, maybe not this, maybe not that. So it's like if a car was on an assembly line, I come in when the frame is getting put down and I say, maybe not this, maybe not that. Good ideas, but you guys haven't been there and you haven't studied the history. Most of these guys are read a few books, watch the movies. Uh, and so I haven't studied a little bit of the history and haven't been on the ground, I'm able to make a checks all the way along the production. This is what I'm able to help them do. So how have you enjoyed uh, Leipzig so far? Leipzig is good. Leipzig is good. The stamp of communism is slowly receding here and, and, and light is returning to this great city. Yeah. Some, some of they'll get all the grass out of the cracks in the sidewalk and they'll actually mow the grass out of the fields and you know the, the graffiti will stop being painted, painted on the, uh, the bypasses. But uh, lovely, lovely girls, excellent beer. I recommend it highly to anybody. This is uh, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark, right? For God's sakes, the land of the Vikings, and we're drinking as king. I was born in Norway, just so you know that. Right here, Oslo. Uh, aquavit, I've had Aquavit, all right? I have no the thrill of Aquavit. Uh, the one that crosses over the equator and comes back to you, I don't know what that does for it, but I like it. <laughs>